So by the way, if you haven't organized your network yet, you need to be sure that you keep on top of that because as you can see, we have quite the setup going on and we want to keep track of where everything is because we'll end up reusing a lot of this information at different spots. So as an example, we have our original Boolean up here. That was the very first fracture we did where we created these big plates. And if we use this B inside A, that'll give us the ribbon of polygons that we're after. So let's go ahead and just set a blast stop right there. B inside A, like that, delete non-selected. So again, we have a ribbon of polygons and that's what the points look like. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, also create a null for this and we'll say out a uh, ribbon frack. You can call that whatever you want, but that's going to be out ribbon frack. I'm going to make my own section that's separate from all this, uh, just because it's going to be a little weird if I start building everything right here. So object merge. We'll go ahead and just grab that guy. And we'll say ribbon frack import. Okay, from here, we also want to grab the original terrain. So let's go all the way over here after the file cache, after the extrude volume, and grab that guy right here. So we'll say Ridge terrain. Transform that down a little bit. So let's say we go down in the Y direction, just a smidge. I don't know why we have this down here, by the way. You're, we don't need that, doesn't matter. Uh, but from here we can use a groups up and we could take our original points. We could take this, we could say keep in bounding regions and then bounding object with the group type being points. Let's call this group our delete non top points. It's not the best group name, but it's okay. Blast, paste that in there, delete non-selected, and we're going to say points. Okay, actually we want to go like that. Okay, so the transform's going down a bit too much. Let's say something really small, like 0 0.05. There we go. Now we just have the points along the tops, and to get rid of these side points, we can modify our base terrain geometry a little bit. So let's go back here and press S for select, get our little laser wand thing here, select polygon faces, and just go for these little edge polygons. Once we have that, we can press E for a scale. Let's go out just a tad bit like that. And then I believe that should give us only these top areas, like so. There's a few stragglers down here, so we can just get rid of these guys manually. As for select, let's just take our lasso tool, just grab these guys, but uh, basically put, that's going to give us what we're looking for. I think that's the only weird one right there. Okay. So that is going to give us what we have right here. Let's also use an add sop to delete the geometry, but keep the points. Let's also mask this off by the volumes, and I want to show you how to do that with VDBs just so that you understand what's happening in a bit more granular detail. So we're going to create a VDB, and same deal from camera. We'll say render cam 2, take this out, let's say right around 44, 48, something like that. And we're going to give ourselves some padding as well. So negative 0 0.1, 1.1, negative 0.1 and 1.1. Take the uniform sampling divs to something like 200, and I believe that's all we need to get things started. Now, here is why this is uh, a little bit more complicated than you might think. You might think that we have VDBs, but if we have middle mouse, we don't. That's because with VDBs, you need to set an active region. VDBs are optimized because it understands that certain areas are active and certain areas are not active. And so you have to be specific about the areas that are active. Long story short, we have VDB activates 
and that will do the trick for us. So we have that, we take up this size, and it basically is like a size from the origin. So we're kind of scaling out from the origin, and any voxels that are within that range can be considered active voxels. So that's what this position tab is trying to say. If we take over the center, we can see that, you know, we can move that. But the origin's fine, just turn this up like so, and now we actually have voxels. So right now if we visualize what these voxels look like by saying VDB visualize tree, you'll notice that there's something weird about these voxels. They're stretched out, they're rectangular right here, and they're also facing diagonal. And if we try to, let's say, convert this to an SDF volume, so let's say that we say VDB convert, and we say VDB, and we want to go from a fog to an SDF. This is not going to work properly. We end up with some weird looking results like that. And so what this basically is doing is because these voxels are diagonal, it doesn't really know how to go through this algorithm properly, and that's why we have a weird result. So here is the rule with VDBs, especially when they're facing diagonally like this. You never want to have voxels that look like this because it causes all kinds of weird complications and problems to happen. Instead, what needs to happen is that these voxels need to be perfectly square and they need to be facing perfectly up in the Y, X, and Z direction. So they can't be diagonal. In order to do this, we need to resample these VDBs. So VDB resample, plug that in. And if we do this, and let's say, instead of trying to match a reference VDB, which is this guy, if we say use voxel size only, now we could say something like 0.1. And if we take our visualized tree, you could see that now we've turned these voxels into perfect little cubes. And that's exactly what we want because now if we, let's say, convert this to an SDF, so VDB convert, and we say VDB fog to SDF, everything works properly. So in this case, we now have something that we can use with a group SOP. So say that we do this, plug that in, and we can just say, Keep in bounding regions, bounding volume, set this to points, and now we've grouped out those particular points. Let's actually take this back though, because we don't want this reaching all the way to the temple. So let's say we go maybe like 45. Yeah, maybe a little bit more, 46, but you get the idea. Now we have these points, we can go ahead and blast that. Uh, be sure to name everything as you go. So we could, see, we could say that this is our cam points. Control C, Control V, points, delete non-selected, and there you go. Also keep in mind that when we used our original volume SOP right here, we also had these diagonal voxels happening, but the reason why this worked back over here is because when we went to combine this, we have a resample right here, and that went through the same resampling that we did right here. To further reduce the number of points that we have here, we can use a group range, or group by range that is. Let's call this random point deletes, set this to a point group, and we can use this range filter, which basically says select one out of every however many points you want. So. If I say one out of 10, we have one out of 10 points selected. And basically we can just use these numbers to blast things out. So let's take our random point deletes, set that to a blast, points, delete non-selected, and now as we adjust this value, we can really dial this in. I'm going to use a value of five because we want a fair number of points uh, to source in because we're going to scale these explosions down fairly small. And if you'd like to additionally randomize the pattern of this, you can also use a sort SOP right here, and this will sort out the point number which is being sourced by this group range. So you could say point source, let's say proximity, 
or you could say spatial locality, and that will give you more evenly spaced points and just generally change how these point numbers occur. Well, in the next video, let's continue on.